Hello everybody, I'm Peter Glob and today I'm gonna be reviewing Marvel Spider-Man Man 2017 Spider-Island Arc or Saga or whatever it's called and only if I can and considering the fact that I'm pretty sure I heard someone say the Spider-Island Saga has been planned since the beginning Oh my god, how fucking did these people, people screw this saga up? Seriously, how is that even possible? Can someone please tell me that? Now, first thing, I don't own any of these images, all of them belong to their rightful owners. But, since I don't think anyone here even cares about this part, let's just go to actual things we care. First thing, some of you probably are going to say, wait, wouldn't it make more sense for you to review Rise of Dark Ark, Saga, and then Spider Island? No, it doesn't, because the only thing Rise of Dark Ark and Spider Island Saga have in common is, the fa is a thing that's in first episode, not really addressed, or is really... In a very tiny way, and in the third episode, and in the first episode, beginning of it. So, not that much. Plus, if you really think about it, that it's just there are just like two plot holes that come from that, or three if you want more. So, yeah, I don't think it really matters. Second, I know Spider Island isn't comic book, so comic book. I heard the story. I am pretty sure there's a lot of things that happened that I am not gonna be aware of. But I got the general gist of it. Gist of it. And now, keep in mind, this is all my personal opinion. So it's basically very unlikely that my opinion is gonna be the same as the as the. Uh, some other YouTubers that review use the Spider Island. Awesome. I am still not struggling to find ways to review sh stuff, so I'm just going to go by characters and then the story and the plot hole and the pro plot problems. Blums. And that's it. Let's get on with this review. Do. Now, the first character we're going to be reviewing is Peter Parker. Okay. Yes, I know I should probably call him Spider-Man because, you know, that's the picture. But considering the fact that Spider-Man only is really in the ar arc's first two episodes, which have based nearly nothing to do with the re rest of the Spider-Island sa saga, which could literally just be called a trilogy, this is how small those two really are insignificant. Seriously, why do writers think for if you have two end things that seem to the rest of it, they automatically mean something. Seriously. So, and, and since he's really only dressed for the ending, and even that they basically have his... Which is basically pointless. So, yes, this show has mostly Peter Parker, while Spider Man doesn't exist. Seriously. So, besides that, let's just get to his character. For some stupid reason, they decide to have Spider Man be a moron and an incomplete, incapable buffoon. Seriously. I'm not making this out. Somehow, from the thing, the beginning. They plan to make him a buffoon. I don't know why. It doesn't even make any sense. Why would they have Spider-Man be a buffoon? I mean, alright, I guess I can sort of excuse if uh, everybody's so easily using their powers. I can somewhat understand that. And because all the weird stuff, I can understand why people won't. And why only Spider-Man would really have a problem with that. But... Then why are there scenes like where people 
he everybody can explain the powers much better than he is. Why is there scenes where he is just be being criticized? Why is he making so many obvious mistakes? I mean, I don't even get it. Was it the point of it? To, I mean, if you want to make a fan, then don't have Spider Man be a talent. They don't have Spider-Man be so really talented and really capable of. I mean, after a while, you just get bored with it. That. I mean, I don't even like it. Get and understand that. I mean, I mean, you always... I mean, if you make the main hero more stupid and more it games, you just... You just make... The whole problem blown bigger, and you become questioning it, and you became just to say how many f mistakes has the person do, and how if they were just simple logic, they could succeed, which isn't a good thing. No, that's that's basically a character in this. Of course, there's a other thing, but I feel like when I discuss Harry, I should discuss that too, or in the story to be more, if I'm totally honest. Now the next cap I'm gonna be addressing is Spider Gwen or Gwen. Now since she now the only real reason why I put her as a character in the Spider Island saga is because she appears in technically first two episodes and for some stupid reason she is the most she's more skilled, she seems to be more capable, and generally supposed to be better than sp being Spider-Man then Spider-Man. I mean, why? And also, here's a little thing I should bring out. In the third episode, they everybody says, "Yay, Spider-Man is awesome. She's out here about her. No one, we can't live. We are in no We are in super danger. But when it comes to Spider-Man, they call her Manas. You know, I'm beginning to think like people in Peter Park in New York in Marvel Universe are probably just like when there comes a new hero that just seems to be a pretty similar style like they just think just call them great what they call the Avengers incompetent buffoons. So yeah, I didn't really like Gwen and I mean I'm not really a big fan of her character so I don't really mind it. But still Gwen is just I mean in the first two episodes she is completely dominating so much better than Spider-Man. But in the but in the last three, she is non-existent. Seriously. She is utterly and completely pointless. I mean what was even the point of having her if you're not even going to have her last enough long until the actual saga starts? Seriously, writers! What were you thinking? The next character is Anya. Yes, Anya. In case if you forgot who she is, which I can, which I cannot blame you if I'm totally fair. Fair. She comes in at the second episode and has honestly seems to be the only one that's actually struggling with her powers. Seriously. She is the only one that seems to really struggle, except that one girl, but the way how she seemed to, to be more like she jumped incredibly far, it's kind of hard to say, specifically. But still, Anya, for some weird, weird reason, is dominated enough in the first episode that to capture a spider monster, so it's pretty damn stupid. Plus, I'm not really complaining about her scientific or all that knowledge. Plus, it was a good thing that we know that, that we found out the Spider, the Gwen and her are good friends. Good, f best friends. Which, was that ever addressed in the rest of the show? Because I'm not think, because I'm not sure there's enough time addressed like that. I mean, I think there's just a couple of, I think there's just like half of an episodes of scenes that they're actually together so it's kind of hard to say but still Anya is a very good addition I don't mind her to become Spider-Woman and she's generally just a good cop to, to me to me 
I'm not gonna put her among the best. I would still put her on, the, on my list of heroes again terrible, but that's just my personal preference. It's nothing else. And now to Harry Osborne. Oh my fucking Jesus. This is just sad. Alright, let me begin again. For for a character, I don't like that he's still a character that's keeping on to what Rise of Dark Ark actually did to show there actually were side effects. So that's good. I mean, I don't mind it. But some of the things are stupid. Like him attacking Spider Man just because his father said so. So, uh, so that they are enemies and all that. Which are pretty. We consider the fact that not that many spiders have really uh, directly attacked you. Most of the things were even times that villains or Jacko specifically, I believe, admit that it wasn't. Listen, seriously. And then when Gwen says it, tells him, he gives another shot. Shot just because she's a. Fr because she had a face or a fan. Which is. Just ridiculous. I mean, unless if a Spider-Man really shows direct damage to you, it shouldn't matter. But, but unfortunately, so they have to basically try to save his father because he found he's alive. Not really a big thing, to be fair. I mean, even he doesn't really address a lot of stuff. Then he basically just... Just does, just you know, tries doing that and kind of uh, acts like oh, it's Spider Man. Now we had anger or something, and now we blame him. But after that, he just acts like a complete uh, douchebag to Peter, pa pa Peter and Spider Man, or both of them. I don't know exactly. It's pretty much the same, same, the same cap, up to even more than they're supposed to be. Seriously, he just says, it's Spider-Man's fault, it's by the if you haven't saved me, I could save the tower. A thing that even my dad didn't exactly want to build, he just built so he could save, save the honor. Which could be again sad, which could not really matter, considering the fact that no, an Osborne literally sacrificed the building to save the city. Which is kind of stupid. Very stupid. It's just ridiculous. Plus, in the, the episodes, it's basically said that, basically told him to be suspicious of his father, not to trust him. But after all that, he seemed to be completely alright. Even if Peter the said there's going to be an attack, he basically said a bomb in the first fucking episode. Hell, it's not even hiding. He'll try to stay on that. Seriously, Harry is just, I mean, guy he's my favorite character in this island, but still, he is just stupid. Also, you gotta lose the whole intelligence thing in this, this fucking thing. If you didn't know he built a glider and a sword, you probably think he's a moron. He's a moron that doesn't know anything. I mean, seriously. And then the Jackal, the, ma the main villain of the Spire Island, that came in, in what? The end of the fourth episode? Seriously, I would not even put him on solo villains if he wasn't then supposed to be the main villain. Now what can I tell about the Jackal? Well, in his First episode, he appear uh, episode that he was in. He was in, he's shown knowledge of others and was affected even if it was made by kids. Technology and use it. Then his next episode, he mutated a kid into a rhino, which is pretty good, and cloned himself himself to attack. Then the episode he next appeared in. It was a good thing to show that he is still at large and get the clone fairy. Then his next episode, he charged the Norman school full of rhinos, which dom dominated everything. And 
and in Rise of the Dark Ark, he just... And then he just had a little thing that basically like, but we have a possible member of the Sinister Six. I don't exactly remember if he was ever a member, if the Jackal was a member of Sinister Six. But, now, and, the, and if you're asking why am I saying this, all these facts about Jackal, well, it's because he basically meant nothing. Seriously, the only reason why they actually they put him in was because he was in the story, uh, he was the main, he was one of the villains. So I don't really think he matters. At all. He does nothing. Think. I mean, just, there's no reason for him. He just says they need a villain, let's have the Jacko, since in the story it w of the comic book made sense. They let's have him do basically nothing but command them and getting his ass beaten by Norman as a spider. And Jesus, it's just been ugh. In again, I'm making going to make a video about addressing the balance of this timeline, so I don't think we I need to continue. The only thing I need to I will say more about the jackal is well, cool design, cool, cool concept, cool idea as a main villain, but it would be better if they didn't address it in, let's just call the final episode that he's a main villain. And now to the other characters. In this story, there's quite a bunch of characters. The citizens are, haven't really done much, and may also didn't really matter much, so that's just the main four. The first one is Norman Osborn. It, because he basically started the whole Spy Island saga. He was a good character, he was a decent, it was fun, great to see him and still is that maniacal character who did did stuff like he, like he was still s pretend to be some superior guy even though he's not in the condition. It was pretty good. I mean I wish he wouldn't be exactly most of the uh, island just be nothing but just a Something, some conversations with Spider Man and Harry, and then spent his him in a medical bay until final when he introduced to the Hobgoblin, blend, which is kind of weird considering the fact that for some strange reason this is the second cartoon they had Hobgoblin come before going on, but let's not address that. So he was definitely a good character, definitely a good side character. The next one is Black Widow. Ah! Oh my God! Why? Yeah. Besides it, make yeah. If you people are gonna be asking me why am I so whiny when it comes to Black Widow, it's not because it despise a character. It's not that at all. It's just. <laughs> She, that, she, her appearance in the episode she starts in the second one is everything, everything wrong with Disney, Star Wars, and a bunch of other things, things that, a lot of other things happened. Seriously. She's the main problem. It's why I cannot wait to see Black Panther the movie because I'm actually curious how they're going to do that if they're going to have the female cap to just dam dominate everything. Now that's before I get up top like I should probably just for some stupid reason she appears appears in an episode doesn't contribute anything to remain of the art. She just she just dominates shows how how much more experience she has how much better she is she she, she showcases how much how much better she is than Spider-Man. She just does everything. Seriously. There's not even a thing like when she that she comes back in the end as a spider monster that shows how dominated she is. No, it's just dominating. Get spider powers immediately, the first second now sort to battle with them. Them so so case how great of a strategist she is in battle. And the only flaw she really had was not being in able to outpower the villains, the Hydra, which is just ridiculous. 
You could at least showcase that Crow's Bones is smarter than her, that she underestimated Crow's Bones, but nope. It's just stupid. Why, Disney? Why? Let's, before I go into another rant, let's just get to, through Craven the Hunter and Miles Morales. Yes, the first guy who gets fire powers after, after the whole thing with the, the whole thing after Spider Man, Miles, he meant nothing. His first episode was basically pointless. His last episode basically didn't have him do anything. The reason why they should have him. And he utterly and definitely was a um, pathetic forgotten character. Seriously. He was boss. He literally had nothing to do. I wonder did they even introduce him if they are going to use him. I might remind you again. They were setting this up. From the very beginning, this Spider-Man storyline. So they didn't, but they didn't even have to use one of the characters. How the fuck do you do that? Also, the reason why I put Spider-Man not on this list on the other character category is because, well, admittedly she did more than Miles, so I get there's something. And now let's address Craven the Hunter. Oh my god, why Craven? Why did they have him in? I'm not really a big fan of his new design. I kind of find it over the top. And his whole Hunter on TV show is decent, if I'm totally honest. But still, I'm not a bigger fan. So, what Craven the Hunter has in this story? Nothing. He has another app. He's just a busy one episode hunting. Gwen, because she's a spider monster, becomes a spider monster. He is there, he gets his ass kicked, kicked, and then, uh, and then it's all over. Nothing else. Ugh. You know, I'm beginning to wonder if they're going to do the same thing they did in Spectacular Spider Man, which they had Craven turn into a monster, to a lion or something, or whatever it was called. So he could beat Spider-Man. But if that's the case, that's just sad. I mean, they're saying that the only way for some of these villains to fight Spider-Man is to become... Uh, to have powers? How fucking retarded is that? Seriously. How fucking retarded is that? And now, let's address the final thing. In this Dr. Spider-Man, or Spider-Man, it's called, just, they should probably figure out at least first a full name, because I'm just calling it Marvel Spider-Man 2017. Teen, but that sounds like an important story. Oh my god, the story sucked. There was just characters, just a pair of now, and suddenly they actually matter. I mean, on the game powers. Maybe it will lead something into the future because she does have power. It was continuous, but still. The the miles was completely dropped. The whole thing with Peter and Harry was just ridiculous because after a while you, you, you realize they wasn't demonstrated that much of the time where Harry and his father really shared anything. It's just the only thing time I really thought, thought they shared a thing that actually showed us why Harry would pick his father over his best f over Peter is because, because well, he stated that stated that he made the school so he wouldn't need to feel ashamed that and the fact that he and the fact that that he built the school just for him, which is just all right. But I think there should be more episodes out there, more like. For, more for that. And again, there's just too many plot holes in this f mo in this s story. I mean, I mean sometimes Carol, uh, like I always said, characters just appear and then disappear and then reappear. It is somehow we are supposed to connect the dots. Dots. The story between P Peter and Harry is just forced. And saying how everyone doesn't understand why he would be hiding. 
the whole last story in Rise of Dark all completely gets thrown in after you realize it, not many of them even up they don't even appear as spider monsters and as if you can somewhat make out in the background if there was something they could hint at it, but nothing really to convey it. Whole Black Widow story was completely an eye pointless and didn't matter. As a matter of fact, so in the first episode matter, I mean, why did Norman build a bomb? Why did anything? It was just a mess. First two episodes, no, like I already said, nothing to do with it. That the fight and the final three, yeah, that was basically just to have something again, but not much. Seriously, I mean. Alright, maybe this would be better if it was decided on for the ha for the half of the season when it was already over and then they decided to go on this story. But guess what? It was from the very beginning. And also, a Spider Island story is a good animated thing. Hell, it could probably be its own fucking cartoon. Yeah, you know, like, just have Spider- just have- the first five episodes be set up to everything, and then just have Spider-Man battling villains with spy powers and all that. It's a good story, but guess what? They don't do it. They do it terribly, and it just is utterly and completely pointless in the long run. Seriously, it doesn't even matter. It matters zero. It's utterly and completely terrible. It's shit. It's just terrible. It's nothing more but terrible. Now, I hope you like this video. I hope you people are gonna leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos in future. And with that said, I cannot wait to see all of you people next time. Bye.